While we're on the subject of conspiracy theorists, let's talk about their other favorite device. It's called proof by verbosity, and it consists of laying out huge volumes of information, more claims and allegations on more subjects about more people and ideas than anyone could ever possibly respond to. Such a blizzard of information gives the appearance of being comprehensive and thoroughly researched. If they have all that amazing amount of evidence, their claim must be true. But it's not the quantity of information that matters, it's the quality of information. You can stack cow pies as high as you want, they won't turn into a bar of gold. Pointing out that the evil government fluoridates our water supply does not support the claim that a particular brand of magically ionized water cures cancer. It makes no difference whether it's true or not, it's irrelevant. Piling on red herring after red herring will never amount to useful evidence. Pay attention and soon you'll run into another claim supported with proof by verbosity. It might be another conspiracy theory. It might be an advertisement for a new type of water with medicinal properties. It might be an herbal product claiming to detoxify your body. Look at all the wild claims they make and take careful note of how many of them are actually directly relevant and specific enough to be testable. Notice how it would be impractical to try and respond individually to each of these many claims. It's an endless game of whack-a-mole. The only way to win? Don't play. Virtually every pseudoscientific claim credits some form of energy. Life force, chi, negative energy, positive energy, the body's energy fields, all meaningless nonsense which sound plausible simply because they throw in a scientific-sounding word, energy. New Age practitioners seem to think that energy is a hovering, glowing cloud that can go wherever it's needed and from which adepts can draw power and feel rejuvenated or accomplish healings. Imagine a vaporous creature from the original Star Trek series, and you'll have a good idea of what New Agers think energy is. Energy is a measurement of something's ability to perform work. Given this context, when spiritualists talk about your body's energy fields, they're really saying nothing that's even remotely meaningful. Here's a good test. When you hear the word energy used in a spiritual or paranormal sense, substitute the phrase measurable work capability. Does the usage still make sense? There's a good reason you don't hear medical doctors or pharmacists talking about energy fields. It's meaningless. This is usually a really frail excuse for why mainstream scientists don't take their claim seriously, why the product is not approved by the FDA, or why scientific journals won't publish their articles. You'll often hear this in the form of a conspiracy of the medical establishment to suppress a quack cure because it's in the interest of the medical industry to keep you sick. In fact, any doctor or pharmaceutical company that could develop a new cure would make a fortune. They'd never suppress it. The same goes for auto manufacturers worldwide who are said to be suppressing new efficient engine technologies. As much as some people with particular ideological agendas would like you to believe it, science never suppresses good science. As we've seen time and time again, by no definition can all natural mean that a product is safe or healthy. I'm standing next to a gigantic stand of poison oak. Consider other all-natural compounds like hemlock, mercury, lead, toadstools, box jellyfish neurotoxin, asbestos, not to mention a nearly infinite number of toxic bacteria and viruses, E. coli, salmonella, bubonic plague, smallpox. For those natural compounds that are not harmful, synthetic versions have been engineered in many cases to make them even safer, more effective, or able to be produced in large quantities. All natural? Often that's a great thing. Just as often, it's not. Some claimants suggest that it's moral, ethical, or politically correct to accept their claims, to redirect your attention from the fact that they may not be scientifically sound. In some cases, such as the anti-vaccine or anti-fluoridation activists, proponents try to use the court system to force their beliefs to be adopted in place of what we've learned through science. Generally, when a theory is scientifically sound, 
Even if it's brand new, it will eventually find its way into the educational curriculum. Good science is done in the lab, not in the courts, not in protest marches, not in blogs, and not on Oprah. A political or cultural campaign to legalize or promote some product or claim is a major indicator that it's